Audiences know him best as Twilight heartthrob Edward Cullen. So the lion fell in love with the lamb. But he's also proven his acting abilities in a range of indie roles, and is now set to take over the iconic cape and cowl in 2021's The Batman. Acting wasn't always his first choice, however, and at one point he almost gave up on it altogether. So how did our Pats make it big on the silver screen? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be discussing how Robert Pattinson got famous. Before he switched his focus to acting, Pattinson had a brief modeling career, starting at the age of 12. With his mother working as a booker for a modeling agency, it could have been a natural fit. But according to Pattinson, once he lost the effeminate and androgynous look popular in the late 90s, work started to dry up. He also considered becoming a musician, following in the footsteps of his older sister Lizzie. Talented pianist, guitarist, and singer, he began performing at open mic nights in his late teens. These skills would later help him out when he played Twilight's virtuoso pianist, Edward Cullen, allowing Pattinson to perform the songs himself. Despite his penchant for performing, he was initially dissuaded from pursuing the arts by his own drama teacher. This was despite the fact he'd acted in several school productions, including Lord of the Flies. Understandably, his drama teacher's comment damaged his self-esteem. Fortunately, however, his father convinced him to join an amateur drama group called Barnes Theatre Company. Father and son had met a bunch of pretty girls from the company at a cafe, and dear old dad figured it was the best way to get his son out there. In fact, he even offered to pay him to attend. Pattinson worked backstage for two years before getting his first part, a non-speaking role as a Cuban dancer. But the second time around, he landed the lead role of George Gibbs in Our Town. Humble as always, he later claimed it was only because all the other actors had left. He went on to appear in Tess of the D'Urbervilles, and anything goes. After attracting the attention of a talent agent during these productions, he netted himself a handful of screen roles. First, it was the German made-for-TV film in 2004, Ring of the Nibelungs, which only diehard fans will remember. Later that same year, however, he performed alongside Reese Witherspoon in an adaptation of William Makepeace Thackeray's Vanity Fair, playing her character's son, Roddy Crawley. Funnily enough, he'd later play the lead role opposite her in 2011's romantic drama, Water for Elephants. When he attended the screening for Vanity Fair, however, he discovered that all his scenes had been cut. The casting director, Mary Selway, felt so bad no one had told him that she let him audition for 2005's Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This strapping young lad must be Cedric, am I right? Sir. It would become his first role in a blockbuster movie franchise, playing Hufflepuff's Triwizard champion Cedric Diggory. Pattinson immediately made waves, even being dubbed the next Jude Law. Look, I realize I never really thanked you properly for tipping me off about those dragons. What followed were a few parts in various made-for-TV productions, before he finally hit the big time in 2008 as Edward Cullen in Twilight. Initially, fans were far from pleased with his casting, and there was even a petition to get him removed, not dissimilar to the backlash over his casting as Batman. But as soon as Twilight author Stephanie Meyer expressed her support, adoring Twihards descended on him in droves, and for half a decade, his life became absorbed by the Twilight Saga. Isabel Swan. I promise to love you every moment forever." He's admitted publicly that his sudden rise to fame at the age of 22 didn't sit well with him, however. For a time, he became something of a recluse, taking refuge from the public and paparazzi inside a gated community in LA's famous Mulholland Drive. He even thought about turning his back on Hollywood and moving into a camper van. While his performances in other movies such as Remember Me and Little Ashes were generally praised, for many he was Edward Cullen now and forever. This is the skin of a killer, though. Today, he says he has fond memories of his time as the teen vamp, but during the Twilight Saga's run, he became famous for his open disdain for the franchise, redeeming him to those who weren't on Team Edward. There's a lot of stuff in the Twilight world that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why are they still going to high school? After Twilight wrapped, if you weren't actively paying attention to him or the indie scene, you'd be forgiven for thinking he dropped off the map. In fact, he spent the last few years honing his craft and working with well-known indie directors like David Cronenberg, who directed Pattinson in both 2012's Cosmopolis and 2014's Maps to the Stars. His other indie projects include The Rover, The Lost City of Z, Good Time, and High Life, to name just a few. More than once, his fame has worked against him in this enterprise. 
Some suspected he was only cast in the DeLillo adaptation Cosmopolis to secure funding and wouldn't be a good fit. While Claire Dennis initially didn't want to cast him in High Life because he was, quote, too young and iconic. None of the rest of us could do this. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there, though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Many times over, however, he's proven himself to be a versatile and incredibly talented actor, more than a match for Gotham City's most infamous villains. If his professional record is anything to go by, he's sure to make quite an impact as the next Bruce Wayne. Have you ever been asked to be one of these superheroes or anything like that? Um, not a superhero. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.